All right, we're going to get started. All right, here's what's going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to, we're going to start out by showing how to bring skeletal meshes into Unreal Engine and animate them using the timeline in Unreal Engine. And I'm also going to show you how to make a skeletal mesh from scratch. Uh, we will rig that skeletal mesh uh, and bring it into Unreal Engine. Uh, we're going to be using a really easy auto rigger for right now. Uh, in a future class, we'll look at um, more advanced rigging. But right now, we're just trying to get custom characters into Unreal Engine, uh, which is our goal. Uh, I am recording this. Check, check. Unfortunately, we will have to push my lovely lecture on motion capture to next class because Spent a lot of time answering questions today, which is fine. So you get to hear me talk slightly less <laughs> today. Okay, uh, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to have to split my lecture into two on the fly right now. All right, so skeletal meshes. Skeletal meshes, like we talked about last week, we kind of just went over it really quickly, but skeletal meshes are meshes that are attached to or bound. The process is called binding the skin of the skeleton or rigging the skin to the skeleton. Skeletal meshes are hooked up to a skeleton. When that skeleton is animated with keyframes, with motion capture, with things like that, when the skeleton moves, the skin that's attached to it moves. Makes sense, right? So this is what a rig and joint system of a mesh of a skeleton would actually look like. Everything that is rigged, like this guy here, you can see the white lines. That is the rig, that is the bone structure, the joint structure, the skeleton. Like I said earlier, different programs call it different things. In Unreal, they're called bones. So to make this skeleton structure is not a trivial thing. A lot of students, they get really excited later in the semester, like, oh, I want to make a custom character from scratch. No, that is really difficult to do. That's a lot of work. You need a lot of fundamental knowledge to do that. You got to make the mesh, then you got to rig the mesh, then you got to put the textures on the mesh. And when you rig the mesh, you got to do something called skin weight painting, which means making sure that when the arm moves like this, the character's nose doesn't come out at the same time. <laughs> Believe me, it happens. Uh, it, it's a very tedious process, and you should just know that it's not a trivial thing, and it's quite difficult. Uh, what we do today will make things seem really easy, uh, but to do things from scratch, and especially for more advanced things, if you want to make a custom character from scratch and rig it in a proper way, or heaven forbid you make a character that isn't two arms, one head, and two legs, it gets much more difficult to do. And there's a lot of knowledge that we just won't cover this semester because this is not a class about rigging. Uh, but we're going to bring in animation into Unreal today. Uh, so there are... There's really one main file type that we're going, to, we're going to be talking about with Unreal, and those are FBX files. FBX files are our 3D mesh files. FBX files can hold textures, they can hold animations, all in one file. We can bring other sorts of files into Unreal like OBJs, but OBJs are not going to have uh, the textures embedded. OBJs are not going to have animation in them. That's why we use FBX files. FBX can be a static mesh, it can be a skeletal mesh, um, either of those. So when we talk about bringing in files, almost always it's an FBX, unless it's a sound file, obviously, or a picture or something like that. So 
So the joint hierarchy for a humanoid character looks something like this. The hip bones attach to the spine bone. Or the spi all these things are attached to the hip bones. So the head is attached to the neck, which is attached to the spine, which is attached to the hips, which is then attached maybe to a root bone that att attaches to the ground. All of these things are parented together into a hierarchy of joints, as you can see here. Starts with the hip bone. Sometimes there's what's called a root bone before the hip bone that the hip bone is parented to. But in this case of this image here, everything is parented to the hips. And then you can see everything that's attached to the spine is from, you know, the pelvis up. The neck, the head, the arms. Obviously the arms have the forearm attached to it, the hand attached to it, the fingers attached to it. All that stuff is parented together. Because wherever the right shoulder moves, all of the right arm, the right fingers, all that moves. <clears throat> so it's not just humanoid air characters that can have animation and can be rigged, but quadrupeds and, you know, tentacles are uh, a little bit more work. And it's not as easy to find animation for them. And if you wanted to make custom animation or, heaven forbid, you wanted to do motion capture with them, you would have to set them up in a very different way than you would a human character, right? Because when you suit up in the motion capture suit, you don't look like this. You look like this, right? <laughs> so how do we adapt this arm movement to tentacle movement, that's something that can be done, uh, but it's it's just not going to work out of the box. You know, you're going to have to go through a process called retargeting. Retargeting is something we're going to talk about a lot this semester, uh, but with something like a, a tentacle or a dog, a little bit more different than a human to a human. Okay? Uh, so here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to bring in some animation from the marketplace. I had that penguin. Maybe I'll just stick with the penguin because I already have it downloaded. And then we're also going to make characters from scratch. So there's a lot of different places that we can do avatar creation on the internet. I'm not sure Adobe Fuse is around anymore. I think Adobe finally killed it off and it kind of looked crappy anyways. Uh, there is this program called Make Human. Make Human is a PC program that you can download. It has tons of uh, tons of customization. It has a really big community for different clothes and uh, other sorts of accessories that you can put on your character. Uh, but the easiest thing to use is this program called uh, Ready Player Me. It's not a program. It's a website. Uh, perhaps you've used it before. Uh, the avatars are very cartoony. That's fine for our purposes right now. Uh, the difference between a photorealistic character and a character that looks like this cartoony stuff here is fundamentally the same. It's the same joint structure pretty much. It's just different textures and different model. Okay. Uh, there are metahumans, which is a avatar creator for Unreal Engine. My inclination is not to get into metahumans unless you absolutely want to because they're very intense on the computer. This, not very intense. Maybe later in the semester, we can get some beefier computers or identify who has the beefy computers and we could use something like this for a final project if you wanted to. But like I said, fundamentally, skills translate one-to-one. -one. It's just a different model. Okay. So does your character have to come from Ready Player Me today? No. Your assignment is going to be to create, well, I guess the assignment is to use Make an Avatar using Ready Player Me. <laughs> Although I do say bonus points if you use something else. So you don't have to use Ready Player Me. If you want to get a little bit more experimental, check out some of those other programs that I use. If you want to use MetaHumans, you could do that. You're on your own for right now, though, if you want to go down that road. 
as long as your computer allows it. But for everybody else, Ready Player Me is the lowest barrier to entry, the easiest option right now to get us animating in Unreal. I'm going to want you to rig that avatar. Avatars come out of Ready Player Me rigged already, but not rigged in a way that we can easily put animation on them right away. So we're going to open up Blender, strip that rig away, and then upload them to a website called Mixamo, which is a motion capture library, very easy to use with practically zero knowledge. In the future, we're gonna use much more advanced things, but for today, we're using Mixamo. And that will allow us to bring it right into Unreal. And that's what your assignment is for next week. You can put them back in the same world that you already made. You can make a new world if you want. Uh, it really doesn't matter to me. You're just gonna show an animated character doing one or a thousand animations. You want to download the entire Mixamo library, go for it. It's up to you. But for right now, let's jump over to Unreal, and I'm going to show you how to put animations on a timeline. So poking around the marketplace, you've already seen that various assets come in these content packs, right? I'm assuming zombie in pants as opposed to zombie <laughs> not in pants. <laughs> zombie in pants is a 3D character that I almost certainly comes with some sort of animation, I would think. It doesn't say it comes with animations. Oh, it is rigged though. You've probably downloaded assets that have animations already. I've seen some of you brought those animals into your project. They probably have animations attached to them, but I don't think very many of you got them to work. That's what we're gonna do right now, okay? So because I already have the penguin downloaded, I'm just gonna stick with that. So in Unreal, you know, everything's color-coded, the different types of files. Remember we talked first class, or not the first class, the second class or last week about style guide. Was it wasn't the first class, maybe it was the first class. I don't remember. Style guide. Uh, animations, typical naming pattern is starting to call them A-N-I-M underscore whatever the character animation is. So anim, penguin fall, penguin flap, etc. All these things are animations, right? If I drag these into my world, get my content browser. Penguin. Or even in an animations folder. It makes sense, right? If I select all these guys, I bring them into my world. Well, they're all going to be stacked on top of each other. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do that. I'll just drag some. The toboggan pig one. Oh, that's nice. That's cute. Are you in a five pack one, by the way, or do you update it? There was an update, but I don't think it's a numbered update, right? It's just an update. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah, would you recommend that, like, during the class or something like that comes up, that we, like, update it like that? Or? That's a good question. I noticed that update popped up just in the last couple days. Weird, it's not letting me update to it though. Um, I would say don't update. Don't, don't, uh, don't rock the boat, you know? It'll probably be fine, but actually, it, I don't think it really matters, to be honest. The only trouble you might get in is later in the semester working in groups or something, and if everybody's not updated, that could be messed up. The only problem that I would really worry about is using the software downstairs, but you're not going to be using your own computer anyways. You're using the workstation down there. So it's up to you. <laughs> 
I think the the tiny updates, like the the five point one point whatever, is fine. If it's like a five point two update, I think that's a bigger risk. <clears throat> So I dragged a bunch of animations in. I'm not trying to do anything really that other than just make a mess right here. Uh, but, you know, they don't play, right? If I click on one of them and I click on the animation tab right here, there's some options that I have. See the green thumbnail right there where it says Anim Penguin Death, I assume trying to be more but that's just the one I picked randomly uh, just like you can change the materials and the meshes on that asset you can change the animations here if I clicked that you would see all the animations that that penguin can do that's <laughs> that's <laughs> bouncing back and forth between them um, the reason that all of these animations are listed here together is because they all share the same skeleton, which you might think is not an important thing, but with Unreal Engine, it's very important. If an animation shares the same skeleton, that means that you can use it to blend between animations. You could have different characters use the same animation if they have the same skeleton. So you can make a character like me, you can make a character like you, but if we're sharing the same skeleton, we could share animations. But the scales would look different, right? I didn't say it would look good. Oh, I just said we I could use the animation. And, and have like extended neck. Wow. <laughs> make, make fun of my neck. Yeah. Yeah, just <laughs> because of the fact that you're generally well higher than me. Yeah. Uh, so you will see when we import a mesh in, it's going to ask us, do you want to create a skeleton or do you want to use an existing skeleton? That is very important, which is the reason why all these things are listed together. If I imported, uh, if I imported, uh, you know, animation penguin explode. Not that's not an animation here. If I imported that or I made it, and I didn't tell it to use the same skeleton, it wouldn't pop up in the list here. It would be like a standalone orphaned animation that I couldn't share with the rest. So. That's where the animations are. And then there's other things here like looping, playing, and initial position. Obviously, playing is checked, but they're not playing. They don't play because the play button is not clicked. Now they are playing, right? If I select this one and I uncheck playing and I click play, obviously it's not going to be playing. Makes sense, right? So we're not going to use the play button, though. We're going to use the timeline today. The other button down here is initial position. You can also set looping, too, if you want. Initial position. Initial position tells the animation when it should start. If the animation is five seconds long. Right now, it's starting at zero, which means it's going to play the entire animation. If you want the initial position to be two seconds in, you put two there. Then it's going to start at two seconds, play to five seconds, play to two seconds or go back to two seconds, play to five seconds, go back to two seconds, play to five seconds, and so on. So if I scrub this initial position right here, you can see I'm actually kind of animating the character. Actually, initial position is just a zero to one thing. It's not in seconds. Scaled. Yeah, it's scaled, just depending on how long the animation itself is. You can't, uh, by the way, it's like going over, like, I guess, like, 1 or 100. I'm not saying it's good. It can't, like, I was messing around and, like, with some things. With some things. With some things. Not in this case. So, 1 is just the end of the animation, 0 is the beginning of the animation, 0.5 is the middle of the animation, whatever the animation length is. All animations are different lengths. Can you do that somewhere? Yeah, of course. Okay, so there, you know, by scrubbing that, you can start to see it animates. You can also, if you click the advanced button, you can change the play rate. You want to play it twice the speed, 
Do you want to play it in slow motion? You know, slow motion with video is kind of tricky, right? You can't just take video that you recorded on your phone and then choose the frame rate to be super, super, super slow because each video is cut into a series of pictures already, right? Difference with 3D animation is there really isn't a frame rate. It just gets interpolated. So you could change the play rate to 0.1. Can I do this globally? Let's see. No, just that guy. <laughs> well, just this guy is going to play at 0.1 speed. <laughs> Here, let's do let's do the toboggan one. This is going to be funny. Yeah. Play rate five. <coughs> You're saying that like slow mo and well, I mean, you're kind of stuck with the video footage that you have. You know, in 3D, a keyframe is just a keyframe. Like, the in-between between between the keys gets interpolated, whether it's 24 frames a second, or 1,000 frames per second, or 5 frames per second. Like, that number is just generated. Right. I mean, there is some software that can kind of blend. Like if you shoot, like phones these days to do the slow frame rate, when you click on slow frame rate mode, it shoots at a super fast frame rate and then retimes it so it's slow, right? Yeah. Different than with animation, like this. But not different with something like 2D animation, because 2D animation is the same thing as video. It's just a series of pictures, right? Okay, where was it? So we don't want to just click the play button. We want to actually use a timeline. <coughs> the timeline in Unreal is called a level sequence. So in Unreal, to create a level sequence, we go up to this button up top. And there's a lot of different ways to create things in all softwares. I usually show you what I think is the best way also probably how I do it. Maybe not necessarily the, what serves you best, but you know you can figure that out on your own. Uh, click on the little clackboard up top here, add level sequence. You can also have master sequences that are comprised of child level sequences, but we don't need to do that right now. So add level sequence. It's going to ask you where you want to save it. I'm going to call it ls underscore penguin. <laughs> or whatever you want. So when I do that, the level sequence actually gets added to my level itself as an actor. And I'm in game mode, so you can't see it. Or, or actually, it is here. Where's that? Oh, there it is. Level sequence, right there. So in order for the level sequence to pop up in this list right here, when you click back up on that icon again, see now I have a level sequence, so it's in the list. How many level sequences can you have per level? An infinite number. How many level sequences will you have per level? Almost always one, sometimes more, if you're doing more complicated things. You wanna keep them separate for some reason. So how do we view it? So if you click back up on that button again, and you click on the level sequence you wanna open, it will open up down bottom here. It will open up what's called the sequencer. If you've ever done timeline animation in After Effects or even Premiere, you can do timeline animation in Photoshop too. Uh, this should be quite familiar, although some of the some of the terminology might be a little bit weird. So here is a timeline. We can make this to any length we want. We can set the endpoint and the out point. And over here, where the green track button is, is an empty space where we put our tracks. What can be a track? Pretty much any actor in Unreal can be put into level sequence and animated or driven somehow. I can put the penguin in here to control its animation. I could put a light in here to control it dimming or something like that, or changing color, or changing position around the level. Uh, I could put a sound file in here to play and stop. Um, 
But remember, this is a timeline. So this is more for making uh, non-live things or making making things. You could make something for live things using a, a level sequence, but you know everything's predefined on the level sequence, right? It's, it's a linear, same every time sort of thing, like a movie is. <coughs> we hit play, it's going to do the thing. So I'm going to drag. Let's, you know what, let's clean this up. Sorry, penguins. We're going to keep one of you. All right, here's my guy. Put this guy at zero, zero. I'm going to drag in my penguin. So there are a lot of different ways to get things into the sequencer. You can drag them in from your outliner. Just left click and hold and drag it in. You can go to the green track button here and click that. And then up top it says actor to sequencer. If you have something selected like I do, it will ask you if you want to. It's kind of morbid. It has a skeleton for the skeleton, skeletal mesh actor next to the penguin death animation. Hmm. It also has a list of everything that's in your level too. A lot of different ways to get things in. I usually just drag the stuff in. And now it's created a track for that. <coughs> so here I have, for my penguin, I have an animation track and I have a transform track. Transform track is to control this sort of stuff. Location, rotation, and scale. So if I wanted to, let's say, let's say the penguin didn't actually have real animation, right? If I wanted to animate the penguin doing a 360 spin, I could go to rotation and click on yaw, because yaw is Z, and see these little buttons right here? This is the add keyframe button, and the arrows are jump to keyframes buttons. Should be very familiar if you've ever done any keyframe editing before. I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to drag my timeline to 150. And then I'm going to set my yaw to be 360. So this little guy should do a 360 spin when I scrub. Or if I hit the space bar to play, it does a spin. So that's it. The speed of how, how it does is like proportion, proportional to your time. Yeah. If I, so right now it's, this is 150 frames, right? 150 frames at 30 frames a second. So what is that, five seconds? Is that math right? Five times 30 is 150. It's Friday, no math. That seems right. I think that's right. <laughs> um, yes. So, you know, if you've never done keyframe animation before, the dis where you put the keyframes on the timeline controls the speed. If I told right now the animation is doing a 360 revolution one time over the course of five seconds. If I instead place that keyframe at 30 sec 30 frames, now it's going to do a 360 revolution in one second, 30 frames, 30 frames per second. So it's gonna be whoop, really fast, right? So yeah, the placement of the keyframes is important. For the more mathematically inclined of you, uh, I guess this is an engineering program. If you ever use the graph editor before in any sort of animation tools, <coughs> After Effects or even Maya, some other 3D program, you can open up something similar in Unreal with this little icon right here. So you can actually get a visualization of the animation as a curve. See its acceleration, slow it down, that sort of thing. You can also change the interpolation of the keyframes too. Right now, uh, these are cubic keyframes. Let me keep the graph editor open just so you can see the difference between the two. So these default auto keyframes, they have an easy in and an easy out. So, you know, it ramps up the acceleration. It's not a linear constant acceleration the entire time. It 
accelerates in, gets up to its speed, and then slows down and stops. <coughs> if I wanted this to be a linear uh, keyframes, I could select them, and then a couple different ways to do this. You click this little drop down right here. Here's the other sorts of keyframes. You can also use keyboard shortcuts to do it. You can right click on the keyframes. Watch when I hit linear, you should see this graph line take the curve out of it and it should just be a straight diagonal line. Boop, like that. So now there's no easing anymore, it's just straight. 300, zero to 360 degree rotation, constant acceleration the entire time. <coughs> so that's how we can add keyframes, but this character has animation itself, right? I don't really, this is like basic animation. This, that's not that cool, right? That would be great for something like a light or something where I'm controlling the brightness, having it flicker or something like that. Um, maybe if I wanted something to have, a, I don't know, maybe I'm making a game and I want to make an elevator that goes up or down, I could do it that way. Uh, you can think of a lot of different things. But this penguin actually has its own animation. So I'm going to delete these keyframes. Just hit the delete button. I'm going to ignore the transformation stuff. I don't really need that. And I'm going to look at the animation track. So right now, there's no animation here. It's empty. Notice it has a plus button next to it. <coughs> there's also a plus button on top of that too, which we'll look at in a second. If I click the plus button on the animation, it's going to show me that list of animations that we looked at earlier. All the animations that are available for the skeletal mesh. So why don't I pick one of these that is not a death animation? Oh, where was flap? Why don't we just walk, do idle? Or no, why don't we just do walk? I'm sure there's a walk. Notice there's a lot of animations here that are like weird names. Penguin toboggan to walk. So that's an intermediate animation that gets it from that belly slide toboggan animation. And then it gets up and gets ready to walk. So we can use those animations to blend between other animations. How do we do that blending? We can do it in the sequencer uh, in Unreal. I'll show you momentarily here. up top here. You need to create one first and then you'll have a list of them down below. And you just click the, like LS Penguin is the one I have. So that will open up this window. If you close this window accidentally, I don't know if doing this, yep, that works. Just reopen it. Sequencer is, besides the main window, probably where you will spend most of your time in Unreal, especially if you're doing keyframe animation. So let's get the animations here. Walk, and is there just a walk? Walk forward, that's what I want. So notice there's a walk forward and walk forward in place. Two types of animations. One is walking in place, and the other one is actually walking and moving forward in the level because it has something called root motion. <coughs> root motion allows it to actually translate around the level itself. I'm just gonna do the walk forward and place one. And all these animations depend on what your character is. You know, maybe you get some animation, you get a character that doesn't have very many animations. Um, it really depends on the asset, I suppose. Penguin has a lot though. Walk forward in place. And here's the length of that. You see this little gray line right here in the purple, that vertical gray line? That's supposed to be where the animation chops and loops over, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Oh, I did the in place one. I don't want to do the in place. I want to do. <coughs> walking forward. There we go. 
yeah, see it loops when it gets to that gray line. You can zoom in and out by holding down control. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that if I cut it right here, it's only going to play that much of the animation, right? You can move these things around as well. Now it's going to start at zero frame, walk forward. <coughs> when it gets to the end of the walk, it's going to stop. So I don't want it to chop like that. So maybe I will trim it down so it doesn't chop. Maybe I will slow down the animation too by right clicking on it, going to properties, changing the play rate to like 0.5. Oh, that's kind of better. So now, is there an animation that I can get that has it come to a stop? Hmm, I'm not sure. Stop. Maybe just idle. Yeah, idle in place. So now I have two animations here on my timeline, but there's a gap in between them, right? So this is the idle one. This is the walking forward one, but I'm trying to get them to be combined, blend together. This is not an exact science. Uh, sometimes the blending just doesn't look good. You know, if you really have a specific animation you want, then you're probably going to need to have it custom animated, right? But you can get away with a lot of animations just by blending them but sometimes it looks weird. We'll just have to see. See, this one drifted back to its home. <laughs> so what I would have to do is I would have to animate the penguin to stay where it is, or I would have to switch the walking animation to walking in place. So now it's walking in place. And now it decides this this blends a lot better. Not perfect. Does any of this have to do with the number of death back that this person has this back in the beginning? The death? Yeah. Where did that go? I would never kill a penguin. You talked about it. No, that has nothing to do with anything now because it's only doing it's only one doing what I've told it to do. Yeah, that's just the name. Because it's almost like you're replacing the... I replaced the animation. Yeah. So, yeah, that brings up a good point. Then maybe you should go and rename it. Right? Because it is a little confusing. <coughs> maybe I'll rename it. Happy now? Thanks. <laughs> so how did I do that blending? I just grabbed one of the animations and dragged it on top of the other one. You can drag them to different tracks. This is not on top of each other. It's just like in Premiere, if you have one video on top of the other one, the bottom video is gonna be covered up, right? So that's how it is in this case. I need them to overlap if I want them to blend together and get this little hourglass looking shape. <coughs> the more that you blend them together, the longer time it's going to blend, which can lead to smoother blends. That's not so bad. No pink shock. And then we could add another one. Animation. I don't know what these animations are. Let's eat. Oh, okay. This dude's going to eat. So this one could almost, I don't almost don't even need to blend this one because the animation goes back to its idle state and then it goes straight into the eat.
All right, so let's do this. Let's make this, we're gonna keyframe animate the penguin walking a little bit forward. So it's gonna walk forward on, what is this, the Y axis? Yes. Start at zero, add a keyframe here. Also, you should know that this keyframe button right here, the diamond with the, the key in it, that is the auto keyframe button. So instead of having to click the little keyframe button here every time, if I'm at a new time and I drag this, it's gonna automatically put down a keyframe, which I think is a little bit more intuitive, but be careful, you can overwrite your keyframe. Like if I'm not paying attention right now, and I'm like, oh, move them back. I just overwrote that keyframe right there. So animation is, this is too much. So we'll trial and error. So let's move them back. Let's try this. Whoop, way too fast. Where does the walk end? So the walk ends right here. So that's where I need to put a keyframe, but he walked too far. Not perfect. Needs, needs a little bit more love, but Good enough for now. So this is how we bring animation from marketplace assets into Unreal. Pretty simple, no? What if you blend two animation that's like drastically different? So one's like lying down and then you say you say you like lying down right next to the That's gonna look terrible. Uh, hmm. Hmm. How do we go from the to buff? See, like they this one starts vertical too, so that's not that bad. Um, if the anim if the assets made good, it pretty much looks good. However, you put the assets together. But you're right, if you take one that is, I don't know what swim attack is. Yeah, how do we get from here to here? What's that gonna look like when we blend those two together? Let's try. Maybe in reality it needs an intermediate animation that gets it from idle to down on the ground to doing the swim attack, you know? Oh, that's not terrible though. <laughs> Oh, so it didn't actually snap to the base animation. Kind of, so when you blend them, it kind of does like a... It interpolates between them. Ah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. no, that's actually pretty funny. Yeah. Or lerps between them. If you've ever heard the lerp term before. Linear, linear interpolation. And if you looked at the animations here... Uh, Yeah, that's not what I want to show. Never mind. So that's how we can blend between animations that we already have. And that's true of marketplace assets. That's true of animations that we're going to get from Mixamo today. Uh, that's true of animations that you record in Motion Capture Studio. If you have an animation of me walking in place in Motion Capture, it's the exact same thing as the penguin walking in place. If you have me swim attacking in motion capture, it's the exact same thing as the penguin. And it's actually a little hard to make seamless like loop for a motion capture, right? Yeah. You're not gonna actually like robot walk. No, it's not gonna be perfect, right? So you're gonna have to clean it up in post production. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no matter how perfect that motion capture you are, it's never gonna be a perfect loop. That's where the artistry comes in, and somebody has to go in and clean up those keyframes and duplicate them and adjust them to be able to get a seamless seamless loop, which is not a simple thing to do, which is why most of our animations for motion capture will probably not be loops. They will be long takes. <coughs> yep. Yep. 
Any questions so far? So I did a little a little animation of the transformation to get it to walk forward. And then I just blended three animations together. The walk, the idle, or four animations actually. The walk, the idle, the eat, and the swim. Can you somehow replace your your like Y transformation to like to like the forward walk that you initially used? And then not have it snap back to where it started? It doesn't snap back to where it started. I mean like because you're you're like using walk in place and then transforming it on the Y axis. Yeah. Anyway that you can use the Z axis and have it stay. You would have to you have to animate the position because because it's physically transforming itself forward in the animation, while the origin of the animation is still at zero zero, the same part that you put it. So when that animation ends and goes to an idle animation, which was created at zero zero zero, that has to snap back. So what's the point of even having that animation? Sometimes you just want that animation. It looks good. There might be a way, um, but I'm not familiar with that. <clears throat> Any other questions before we switch gears? Yeah. Uh, a master sequence. A what? It's a master sequence. Master sequence. Mas it's just nesting level sequences within another sequence. Mm -hmm. Could be for organization. Also. Once we start adding cameras to the sequencer, to think of, you know, like, uh, I like to use the analogy of like a basketball game or something, right? At a basketball game, at like Barclay Center or something, there's, I don't know how many cameras, like lots of cameras around the arena to get all the different shots, right? And then there's some person in the production truck, the director, that is saying, you know, camera one, go. And that's the feed that goes out to the television that broadcasts, right? So you could use the master sequence that then drives which sequence is in control at that point in time, if that makes sense. Also, just because, just because this sequence starts at zero frames, if you put in the master sequence and have it start at frame 100, it doesn't have to start at zero anymore, you know, because you're moving it as a modular unit. With anything that you put in the sequence, lights, animations, sounds, camera movements, anything, does that make sense? Yeah. Alrighty. Um, let's let's do something from scratch then. So I'm gonna use uh, this website called Ready Player Me. It's the avatar building site, which I think most of you will use for your assignment. I think you have to create an account, but otherwise it's free. My avatars. Let's create a new avatar. You know, this is incredibly simple to do. I'll just pick this guy. Sure. If you've ever made a character for, you know, Skyrim or Cyberpunk 2077 or whatever, The Sims, uh, this is the same idea, right? I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> nice, I, nice comical scan. <laughs> so, you know, try to make your uh, time in Ready Player Me brief compared to the time that you spend in Unreal. <laughs> I'm happy with this character. This is fine. So, you know, you can do whatever you want. Maybe we'll give him. Maybe we'll give him a. Yeah, a, like a nose piercing. Sure. Or let me give him a JSON mask. Sure, exporting. So now this guy goes in my library, and we're gonna introduce another piece of software to the equation here, Blender. Uh, why Blender? Because Blender is the only uh, software that can, out of the box, read GLB files, which is what Ready Player Me exports, which is really annoying. So we just use Blender as a converter <laughs> to convert to FBX. 
really dumb. So when you have your avatar in your uh, in your My Avatar section, click on the little dot hamburger icon there. I'm just going to call it that always now. Uh, download avatar, GLB. It's going to ask you where you want to save it in a second. Save this to, I guess, my desktop. I'll just call this RPM for Ready Player Me. I'll just call it Jason for the Jason mask. Save. I am recording this. So now I'm going to open Blender. If you've never used Blender before, don't freak out. Me either. But you just follow these steps and you will be fine. So this is the default Blender when you open it up. This is just the default like layout. Uh, we can get rid of all this stuff, the camera, the cube, the light, just select them and delete, delete. Now I'm gonna go to File, Import, File, Import, GLB, this one, because that's what we're importing. File, import, GLB, and then wherever you saved it at, I put mine on my desktop, there it is, import. If you've never used Blender before, but you've used other 3D softwares before, pretty much the same. You can still use Alt to navigate around, but we don't really need to do that too much. Uh, see, it doesn't have any materials on it. It's because we are not in shaded mode. So if you click on the one off to the right there, you will get a lit shaded mode. He looks dark because I just deleted all the lights. If you want unlit shaded mode, you can click on uh, the middle one, which is that one. You don't have to do this to export, but I'm just showing you. And there he is, looking spooky. You can see it also has a uh, something coming out of this guy's head. That is the armature, or the joint structure, or the skeleton. We don't really need this, so if you wanted to, you could delete the armature. You'd have to don't delete the everything is parented within armature, so don't delete the top thing, but delete the uh, bone structure if you want to. You don't you don't have to. What we're going to do doesn't doesn't really have any effect over that. But see, I deleted the bones now. Now they're all gone. Wireframe mode is the one off to the left. If I want to click back to shaded mode, I can. The uh, software that we're going to be using, Mixamo, the website, uh, that is what's called an auto rigger, an auto rigging tool. Uh, that will take a mesh, whatever the mesh, works better with humanoid meshes, although I've hooked some weird things up to it. And it with some levels of success, uh, but it, it's expecting a humanoid character and it will uh, rig it and animate it. Okay, so here we go. Now I just need to export this file. You have to strip the skeleton before you put them into the... No, okay. I'm just showing you if you started with a mesh that didn't come with a skeleton, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe this is the model you made or it didn't come with a skeleton for some reason or whatever. Um, these avatar building softwares only recently started coming with skeletons as like, you know, MetaViewverse chatter has gotten increased and novices that don't know how to rig want to do animation. So, you know, it wasn't always the case. Now I'm going to export this file, export FBX, FBX, dot FBX. Where do you want to save it? What do you want to call it? Call it the same thing, RPM underscore JSON, but now this is an FBX file. Very important. Although, uh, remains to be seen if the textures actually work. So you need to change your path mode to copy, and then you need to select this little box right here, the one that's gray, and turn it blue. So copy, copy in the dropdown, 
and then click this little icon right here for blue. Copy, and then the little file box right there, turn it blue. What this does is it is supposed to export the textures uh, from the character. Sometimes this doesn't work, and I'm not entirely sure because I'm not, I don't know Blender very well. Um, but we'll see if it's a problem. Maybe people that know Blender better than me can solve it. I feel like this only recently started being a problem, and it's only a problem like, well, most of the time, but not all of the time. It's strange. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, because if you look up tutorials for what I'm doing right now, they're going to show you the exact same thing, but they never have the problem. And I did this for the class last time I taught this class and the time before that, and it wasn't a problem. But I feel like either something got updated with Ready Player Me or Blender. And I don't know. I, uh, I just unpacked my, uh, all the, uh, the textures in the project. You have and everything. Yeah, yeah it, was like, it was like 40 images, right? Wow. Which is actually kind of insane. That is. Yeah, but uh, after I did that, like I talked earlier, like my character, like yeah. the, the materials were working. Yeah. And then I unpacked the materials, which is super easy. Okay. Like two clicks. Okay. And then uh, it like linked up in Cinema 4D and like perfect. It, it was imported great. So I don't know if we uh, if we, we should incorporate that in the process and export. Yeah, it let's Gustavo. let's yeah. try it. Let's try it. Well, let's just see what happens first, and then we'll go back and and try this. So export, it's exporting. Now I'm going to go to Mixamo. Uh, if you have an Adobe account, like your NYU one, then you can use that. Oh, no. Is it not Mixamo? Yeah, it is. Oh, I just typed it wrong. Okay. So uh, it, you have to log in with your Adobe account. You go to Characters up top. Be forewarned, uh, this doesn't save your character. It used to before Adobe bought them, but now if you upload a new character, it overwrites the old one. So you have to download it to save it or redo everything. Okay, so they have, uh, this is a library of characters and mocap animation. We're not going to use one of these existing characters. We're bringing in our own from Ready Player Me. We go to upload, select character file. Uh, wherever I saved it at, there's the FBX file. Let it process. Depending on the complexity of your file, which these Ready Player Me's are not very complex, uh, you just have to wait for this to finish. So yeah, this did not import correctly. See the arms are not the skin texture. But texture-wise, that's another issue. <laughs> if you have the problem with the textures for this assignment, don't worry about it. Just roll with it, okay? The point is, is that we get a character in that's custom rigged. I'll come up with a solution for sure, or um, you know, you will. So now I have this brought in. It's in what's called an A pose. I click next, and now it wants me to position these points for the chin, for the wrists, for the elbows, for the knees. The skeleton creation here is only as good as you placing these points. So do a good job. Doesn't have to be perfect. The groin. And click next. Depending on how complex your character is, this might take a little bit of time. It shouldn't take any longer than like 30 seconds. But it says it can take up to two minutes. But I think that would be strange. That's yeah, nice, right? <laughs> Adobe bought this company a couple years ago. All right, moment of truth. Look at that. It's animated with a default animation. Textures are messed up. The eyes don't have textures on them. More Jason now. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, everybody just put a mask over their character's face and there'd be no problem. <laughs> Click next. 
So now we have our character in the viewport here. And if I click on the animations tab up top, I have the list of lots and lots and lots and lots of motion capture. Hundreds, maybe thousand different motion captures. You can do the search if you want. What sort of action do we want this guy to do? No, we're definitely doing the twerk animation. There we go. You can type it in, click it, boom, done. There are some basic settings that we can mess with over here. Overdrive is like the speed. Character arm space controls how bumped out the arms are. If you have a really big character and it's colliding through its body when it's moving, you adjust the arm space, it will bump the arms out. Yeah. You know, if you got a 3D scan of yourself, take you five minutes to be twerking like this. Character arm space, if I bump this out really wide, you see it gets kind of crazy. Nah. Yeah, let's see with the hands on the knees. Yeah, they don't even go on the knees. <laughs> It's the speed. Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to download this. You click download the yellow button right here. There's a couple options. The only one you really need to look at is skin. With skin and without skin. The first time that you download the animation, you need it with skin. So that attaches the character skin to the skeleton. Every other time that you bring in an animation, you don't need to bring the skin in. Because every time you bring the skin in, it's going to be a lot of megabytes of space. You don't need to bring all those textures in again. It's not a unique character. We only need to bring the character in once, then we bring in all the animations. Just like the penguin. The penguin mesh is there once, and then it's just animations that come in. The animations, if you bring in animations to Unreal separately, they're just bones that are moving without the mesh attached to it. Because Unreal knows that they're using the same skeleton, it puts those animations onto the mesh correctly. So let's download a, a twerking animation. Download dance twerk. Sure. Looks good. And then let's give me something else. Anything. What sort of movement? But what are the options? Just tell me something. Jumping. Yeah, we're going with this one. We're running out of time. <laughs> so what happens when I open up to the audience? I don't know. <laughs> so this one I'm doing without skin. It's just the movement. It's just the skeleton. If I was to import this into Maya or Blender, it wouldn't have the skin attached to it. It would just be the bones. So now I'm going to go back to Unreal. Sorry, I'm racing a little bit because I'm running out of time. Um, now we're going to import. So Content Browser, I'm going to create a new folder for this. Add new folder. Let's uh, call RPM for Ready Player Me. Import. Put this on my desktop. Dancing Twerk's the one that had the animation or the mesh on it. I would probably name that like mesh. Or actually I would probably download I would probably download an animation that's just a T pose from Mixamo if I wanted to do this more professionally. And then I would download the twerk as just the animation without skin and the boxing one without the skin too. Although I don't think I downloaded the boxing one yet, did I? No, we'll get there. Open. Most of the stuff can stay defaults. Skeleton right here. This is very important. We don't have a skeleton yet, so I'm setting none. Sometimes Unreal will fill this in. If you know you're not supposed to have a skeleton yet, click it and set it to none. You'll have to clear it when you click the dropdown. Next time when I import the boxing, I will go and tell it the skeleton that just got created. If that makes sense. So import all. That was pretty fast. You made a folder name. 
Yeah, I made a folder because it's a bunch of stuff. You know what? Didn't import the animation. Very easy mistake to make. So I'm just going to import it again. Oh, bummer. Delete everything. It's really easy to accidentally not import the animation. The reason for that is because you didn't click import animations, dummy. So import animations. Skeletal mesh. Which is fine, actually, because you know importing skeletal mesh still creates the skeleton structure. Then I could import the twerk animation and the boxing animation separately. But here they come in together. So here it's gotten created. There's the twerk animation. For some reason, the material on the face is all fucked up right now, but that's another issue. Let's download this one too. Download. Oh, I just never clicked save as. My bad. Okay. So now import boxing. Look at that. Sometimes Unreal does a good job at recognizing the skeleton, but it's not always, it's not 100%. But in this case, it's only the it's the penguin skeleton or the other Mixamo skeleton. Did a good job. There's actually a couple other skeletons in here too that are default. But dancing squirks twerk skeleton, that's what we want. But notice that skeletal mesh stuff is gone now because it's just going to import the animation. So click import. And all that got created this time was just the animation file. So now I have a character with a busted face for some reason because the materials didn't work. For some reason, got a white material got created. I could fix those by changing the color and stuff with them. But our focus is on the animation right now. So in the animation tab for this character, I go over here, animation mode. And I change this from animation blueprint to animation asset. You know, I have no animations on this right now. If I click the drop down, it should give me two animations, which it does, the boxing and the twerk. If I put the twerk on, it takes the pose. If I play with the initial position, you can see I'm scrubbing it. If I click the play button, it plays. Now it's the same thing as what we did in getting it on the timeline. You drag it in. Actually, you don't even need to put the animation on here because we're putting it on in the sequencer, you know? So what I could really do is just say no animation here. So it's just the skeletal mesh. Drag the skeletal mesh in. It's not doing any dance right now or the penguin's getting down though. <laughs> and then I can go to the animation tab, pick boxing. Also add the twerk. We'll see how these blend together. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That worked pretty well. You know, animations that are standing, they'll blend pretty okay together. If it was like something else on the ground, that's okay. <laughs> it's, I think it's great, yeah. It's meant to be. And let's blend back to the boxing animation. Let's try to push it. So the, maybe the box, the like the arm was a little weird there. Why did I feel like the first punch has like no power? Because it starts where it's supposed to start. Oh, and that. Yeah. But that's not an exact science, right? You figure that out. And that's, that's it. That's the assignment. <coughs> so don't freak out too much about the materials if they're messed up. You can try to drag another material on for the face and correct them. Uh, but it, it's a known issue with Ready Player Me. Hopefully we'll have a fix. Or if you come up with a fix and you want to post in the Discord channel, that's great. Hint, hint to Blender people. Otherwise, just post a, a screen recording of your character dancing in some sort of world okay can be the same world it can be a different world that's up to you
Enjoy. See you.